If you're watching this, it's not too late. Turn your volume down in this video. There's a lot of thunder. Just warning you. What's up, folks? It's your boy Bob Hollywood back with another exciting review. The final review for the month of May. It's going to be this McFarlane Toys, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, Zalm action figure. Uh, yeah, the Prince of Persia, Persia, Iran, that's in Asia. So Zalm is Asian. So Zalm is going to be getting reviewed. I just bought this figure today from uh, a local toy store and yeah this guy ran me seven bucks and as you can hear it is thundering its ass off but we're gonna power through this so maybe the volume for this video will be lower I'm gonna have a warning because yeah that was loud and it's not gonna not happen again so yeah it's price tag is $6.99 I got 30% off this guy you do the math don't feel like doing it then this is from the year 2010 and you see some figures in the back it is not this Zalm that we have it is this action deluxe figure that we have I'll see how I how that goes how I feel about that I'm not really a action figure person but we've, we've done action figures on the channel. We did Toad, and we did Blob earlier this year, and we've done things in the past. So, yeah, it says Press Lever and Snakes Shootout. So this might have to be like a Cobra Commander sort of thing. You see on the cover, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal as Prince Dastin. I've never played Assassin's, from Assassin's Creed. I've never played uh, Prince of Persia, watched any of the... I've never played any of the games, watched the movie, any of that... Um, yeah, apparently it's a Disney movie, and I know it was not received well. Anyway, that's enough talk, man. Let me just bust this guy to his plastic prison. I'll be right back. All right, folks, we're back. As you see, Zalm is right there. He's not in a pre-pos... He's not really in a pre posed position. I thought he would have been, but he's not. Uh, this is the snake that apparently shoots when you do his action feature. It is a silver snake. Mouth open. Looks like a snake. It actually looks pretty cool. I'm trying to see if I can get the details to show on fingers on the camera. Or does it just want to focus on my ashy hands? It actually looks pretty cool. And I'll see how that fits on him in a second. I just want to look at the other accessory. In the package, it looks like he's holding this as maybe like some sort of weapon and this is also silver same color as the other piece obviously a serpent as well this one has its eyes colored red uh, yep both eyes are colored red let's see how he holds them he has these sort of whole hands actually no no there's there's space in between on the right hand at least so you see there it plugs into that uh, let me just take a look at the packaging. So if I twist his body, I'm going to do it that way. He is, he is not, oh no, it's on his hand. There's a button right here. The package just makes it seem more dynamic than it is. It's not necessarily. And I know you couldn't see how far it went. I didn't know how far it would go. I didn't want to lose it. But I'll turn it to the side now. And again, the button's right there. My hand, let's see if it'll reach, reach my hand. It said, fuck me and my hand. There we go. I think it didn't shoot that first time when I was trying to hit my hand because I had turned it while it was in there. Still reaches my hand. I just, just keep testing it out farther and farther. You can't see my. Well, you. I'll put my hand in view. And yeah, hit my fingers, and you could see that. I wonder if it'll hit the back. 
It did. It just needed some work out the kinks because the first time it went like, like right there, like, like you've been getting it in and you ain't got no more. But um, that's that's beside the point. He has this. Like I said, it looks like a weapon in the package. Maybe he likes snakes, but he can hold it in either hand. Again, the fingers here do not separate the, the index finger is not separate from the thumb but over on this hand that is not the case the index and the thumb are separate but he can hold it in either hand i think it just works best to hold it in his left hand since his right hand is his assassin hand so let me put the accessories to the side i am accumulating accessories over here that need to be put in put where accessories go all right let's take a look at him I tried to look the actor up before all this. I don't remember what I came up with, but his name had a lot of syllables. So I'm thinking he's European, but again, the character itself is Persian, Asian. And Newsflash, or fun fact, and I can't speak for all of them, but the one Iranian woman I knew in her family, they did refer to themselves as Persian. So I don't know if it's an ethnic group there or if they just keep that term. And I wonder if it's like that for other countries that have changed their names. Like uh, Istanbul was Constantinople. <laughs> anyway, he looks hunched over. I guess if you're an assassin, that's kind of like going to help you blend in. People are going to, you're going to be less assuming if you look like a beggar or crippled or whatnot. But he can stand up relatively straight. These knees, I'm going to figure that out when we get to articulation. Let's just go over his details. He's got a dark turban and I know my camera keeps cutting in and out. Hold on one second. Couldn't figure it out because I am not a tech savvy person, so fuck it. Um, yeah, got the dark turban, looks to be some reds in that brown, and then down here is just a more brownish brown. Same with this cloak part. I want to say they're the same color, but this is a harder plastic, and this is a softer plastic, so the difference in material may be, may be giving them different shades. This is like a silver, it's on both of his upper arms, both of his, both of his biceps, on his, on his forearms. On his forearms, it's brown. It's like the same as this. But again, this is harder and this is softer. So that might be affecting the difference. But there's a lot of texture. You can see he's textured. Oh, this looks like chain mail. This looks like a different type of armor. This looks like fabric. Armor. Armor. You can even see like the welding or whatever would have been considered back then on his boots, paint on the back. And what am I, I'm not, I shouldn't be surprised, this is a McFarlane toy. McFarlane, even now, does a pretty decent job. I don't buy too many McFarlane figures, but they don't skimp, man. Todd does his thing. And you can see his face is scarred under his right eye. Decent paint. On his eyes. Lips look good. Can't really see any hair poking out, so I don't know what this character's hair looks like. But yeah, Todd did a good job. Let's go over his articulation. So his head is going to rotate 360, but it's getting hindered. The back of his turban, or maybe even the front, is hitting the shoulders. So he won't rotate 360, but there is no up or down. There's no uh, hinge in there. Arms gives you a great T pose, basically a Y. Rotates 360 there. It does bend at the elbows, but it's going to be very minimal. But it does also have that rotation at that elbow joint. Hands rotate 360 on both hands. Torso, he rotates 360 at the torso, just at the top of the sash part, the cummerbund, I don't know. Legs, 
they do go forward and they go to the side and let's get to the, the, the mystery part knees you can see they rotate 360 but there is no hinge there's no bend whatsoever in those knees as for his foot that rotates and there's a ball joint and there's a ball joint that McFarlane uses for their ankles and their uh, <coughs> wrists to this day. He does not have any peg holes. And then he can stand. He stands. He stands pretty good. So, if I'm not missing anything, I believe it's time to do his height. Let's get his height, and again, he is hunched over. There's nothing we can do about that. I don't think he's going to stand if we try to straighten him out anymore. But the way he is, is just a little over five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. A quarter and five. Let's do some size comparisons. Let's bring in the review crew. Let's bring in John Jones. Again, I do not have the actor's information, so I don't know his actual height. And again, he's also hunched over. So he's taught, excuse me, he's shorter than both John Jones and Titus O'Neil. And that's fine. That's pretty fine. And we have Eric Killmonger. I actually just got Today as well, I got the other version of Eric Killmonger in that suit with like a different painting, the original version. This one is again a re-release. And he's shorter than both Eric Killmonger and Lando. I think some thunder's coming soon, folks. Well, it's coming. It came, but you could hear it. It wasn't as loud. And then Winston Zedmore. And Lucio, I believe the two shortest members of the review crew, and they are still taller than him. But I feel like if this was a person that was standing fully erect, he would be taller than them. Let's do the ladies. Andra and Vixen, obviously it's no comparison. They're going to be way taller than them, taller than him. And our final size comparison are going to be Devin. And Roadblock. Again, he's shorter than both of them. All right, folks, so that's that. That is the final review for the month of May. Only thing next, the next video after you see this, is going to be May's ranking list. And... Will he be on there? I'm not 100% sure, but I don't dislike this figure. I mean, he's got some limits in the posability, but he's in a good scale. He's got, he looks good. This is just a regular civilian, maybe in Persia or African world or something like that. But yeah, he looks good. I will see you shortly. Until then, action figures speak louder than words.